the state versus Richard Alexander Murdoch defendant, indictment for murder, guilty verdict. Minimum sentence for murder is 30 years. The maximum sentence is life imprisonment. Welcome back to the Johnny Rogers Show, where I bring you the latest news and updates from around the world. Today, we're discussing the recent verdict in the trial of Alex Murdaugh, a former South Carolina attorney accused of murdering his wife and son. Here are five key takeaways from this case. Takeaway number one, quick verdict. The first takeaway is that the jury reached a verdict of guilty on all counts after less than three hours of deliberations. This shows that the evidence presented was overwhelming and convinced the jury beyond a reasonable doubt of Murdaugh's guilt. Murdaugh was convicted Thursday on four counts, the murder of Maggie Murdaugh, the murder of Paul Murdaugh, and two counts of possession of a weapon during a crime. On the weapons charge, the sentence is up to five years, or five years, um, which has to be concurrent if a life sentence is imposed. Takeaway number two, life sentence. The second takeaway is that Murdaugh was sentenced to life in prison for the murders of his wife and son. This punishment reflects the severity of the crime and ensures that Murdaugh will not be able to harm anyone else. However, Murdaugh told the judge that he was innocent and that he would never hurt his wife or son. South Carolina Attorney General Alan Wilson said the verdict came after nearly two years of blood, sweat, and tears from a lot of hardworking people. He went on to add, Our criminal justice system worked tonight. It gave a voice to Maggie and Paul Murdaugh, who were brutally mowed down by someone they knew and trusted. After the verdict was read, the defense moved to have it thrown out and a mistrial declared, but Judge Clifton Newman denied the request, citing the massive amount of evidence and testimony the jury had considered. Takeaway number three, financial crimes. The third takeaway is that Murdoch still faces another trial for numerous financial crimes. This highlights the complexity of the case and suggests that Murdoch's motives for the murders may have been related to his attempts to cover up his financial wrongdoings. Prosecutors argue that Murdoch killed his wife and son in a desperate effort to distract attention from his financial crimes and gain sympathy from the community. Murdaugh also faces nearly a hundred charges against him for various financial crimes including fraud, money laundering, tax evasion, and forgery, and is accused of stealing more than eight million dollars and trying to get a man to shoot him in a ten million dollar life insurance scheme. While he admitted to some of these crimes on the stand during this trial, legal proceedings in those cases are still ahead. Takeaway number four, drug addiction. The fourth takeaway is that Murdaugh admitted to lying to investigators about his whereabouts on the night of the murders, citing his addiction to opioids as the reason for his dishonesty. This highlights the devastating impact that a drug addiction can truly have on individuals and their loved ones. His attorney said that his drug habits cost $50,000 a week. Murdaugh went on to say, I'm not quite sure how I let myself get where I got. I battled that addiction for so many years, I was spending so much money on pills. Takeaway number five, flawed investigation. The fifth takeaway is that the defense argued argued that the investigation itself was flawed and failed to collect important evidence that could have even pointed to someone else as the killer. This raises questions about the effectiveness of the criminal justice system and the importance of conducting thorough and unbiased investigations. Now, over the course of the trial, though, the number of alternate jurors dwindled to one, following dismissals for medical reasons and in one case speaking about the case. That juror was removed, though, during the closing arguments. That's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching, and please let me know your thoughts on this case in the comments below. Plus, don't forget to subscribe for more news and updates. You've been listening to The Johnny Rogers Show. New episodes air every Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 